least I can tell you, you know, which in some way is endearing because they just, they're watching over you, you know, they want you to be safe, they want you to make the right decisions, they want you to know what it's like, you know, and to be aware of what's out there. For example, when you're going to college, they'll sit you down months before, you know, from the time you graduate high school. And they'll sit you down from, you know, your first month of holiday. Chat with you. For example, the people who go to universities away from home, which mostly the best universities are, let's say, in the capital, Nairobi. So coming from a small town like my cousins and I, we are very afraid of the big city because this big city, some people just visit the capital like once or twice, you know, their whole life. And now they're gonna be living in the big city, so parents will sit you down months on end, advising you on what it's like in the capital, what's happening and stuff, the things they've had. If some of them have ever been there, their experiences and stuff like that, so... And then they will tell you on the final day, you know, I haven't told you much. I haven't spoken much. So, I'm hoping the little I've given you will suffice. Yeah, this is another thing that really, like, threw me off. Because I thought it had changed. So, you know, in most African homes, at least, East Africa and Central Africa, you always have to dress decently, you know, presentable, look good. Skirts should be below your knee, you know. You know, present yourself in a manner that's, you know, looked up to. Like, um, decent wages, cuts below your knee, blouses all buttoned up, and there's no, like, v-neck, you know, v-neck showing your cleavage, or, or off-shoulder, it is crazy because when my grandmother was raising me, I would just have plain boy t-shirt. And I thought since, you know, years have passed, she would be more open to, you know, off shoulder and, you know, shoulders out kind of a dress. But no, in 2018, I went to my cousin's wedding and I had a dress that, you know, this dress is that it starts from my armpits, you know, the shoulders are. Oh yeah, so apparently I didn't know that, you know, nothing has changed, it's still the same, you know, way of thinking, and every senior person I talked to at the wedding, they just kept on trying to cover my shoulders. I felt like, oh my god, this is absolutely nuts. My grandma spoke to me, you know, putting her arms over my shoulders, asking me, aren't you cold? And then... Our family friend, an old lady, was my mother teacher. She spoke to me for the whole time she was looking at my shoulders like she couldn't stop looking at my shoulders like in a very, I mean, oh, kind of way like, what are you wearing? And remember the dress is up to my knees, like covering my knees completely, almost to my ankles. The only flaw was the shoulders. There were no sleeves, yes. And that just threw a lot of old timers off. And when I say old, I mean people from 45 years going down, going up, I mean 45, 50, 60. It was crazy. I was like, what? Yeah, and even people in their 30s were looking at me in disbelief, like, why did you wear that? Because my sister, she was, she's, she died, so I'm gonna speak in the past, she was at the wedding, and 
Even low. 
in my to be honest most African parents are closed minded you know they have refused to accept that culture has changed and whatever they consider deviant may have changed over time so we spend productive hours really arguing with their parents over choices that they consider a poor like your parents will consider that your choices are poor and illogical according to their standards you know because they do not understand that this is how the world is you know and for the most part they'll just accuse you of being you know uh, non-christian and you know you are trying to change the way god intended things to be and you are being a disobedient kid who will bring sorrow to the parents you know there's a saying in the bible that says a foolish child will bring tears to their mother yeah. and also there's this thing where they critique judge and harass you to make sure that their legacy is not tainted <laughs> It's more like what I said earlier about them wanting you to do exactly what they tell you, you know, and raising you in a way that they tell you don't embarrass me out there because you don't know who's watching you and what will come back to them. Yeah, so basically the problem with that is they are probably worried that you ruin all the hard work they've put in you, disciplining you, teaching you better according to them. And you will ruin also their good name, as I said. There will be people constantly watching you, especially if you come from a small town like me. <laughs> so they try to straighten you before you go too far with your modern thoughts <laughs> or arguments and after that they'll of course tell you it's just that I worry about you and I love you and you know what to some extent you can really understand where they're coming from with them. Yeah, so somehow in a weird way you will like try to rationalize where they're coming from just to make sense of it yeah i didn't want to finish before i say to this <laughs> great in primary or high school basically determine your future so that you do not you know end up like the certain drunk or neighbor who will literally just has no job, no money, no future. You know, there's always someone like that in your town or a neighborhood or village. So you always have to bring the best grades home, you know, so that you do not embarrass your parents and you do not cause them pain and shame because if you get bad grades, then that means your future is over. So, um, yeah. You have to constantly be under pressure to perform, get good grades, do well in school because if you do not, that's it. You're a, you're a bad child, you're a bad fruit, a bad seed. That's, a, that's the word I was looking for. And lastly yeah kids in the african way of you know thinking parenting really they are retirement plan <laughs> they will always tell you you know i took care of you you know guilt you <laughs> i took care of you so now it's your turn to take care of me <laughs> i actually know some cultures that when a man is paying dowry for the woman I guess it's Sudanese. You pay according to the girl not having any signs of having a hard life. Basically, they'll tell you we are counting the dowry according to the girl, how she was raised. She was 
Stop. 